The key is to run this thing all winter long, you have, it is really, it is really cold. <laughs> I don't feel comfortable walking on this, but I will. Still good, still good. I'm not gonna go much further. I was gonna actually say I should do a cold plunge, but I only know one guy that enjoys the cold plunge, and that's Greg Whitstock. We might even be able to get him to swim from one hole to another to another and go underneath the ice. Hey, really quick, let's go check out the front feature, see how it's doing, and then I'd love to show you what that thing looks like at night. So there it is. Hey, good morning everybody, it's Brian with Team Aquascape. I'm actually sitting in my house right now, getting ready to be picked up. I'm heading out to Arizona to go meet up with Jack and Ralph, work on, I think we're gonna finish up a project that they're working on. Maybe not, maybe they're already done, and it'll be great just to go see a project that they're working on and they've got it all finished. I think it's for a dog or something. Can't wait to show you that, but I'm sitting at my favorite spot in my house, my spot at the kitchen table. And you guys know what I'm talking about. Everybody has their chair at the kitchen table table and I'm looking out at my waterfall out the window over here and notice part of it's not running and so I'm a little concerned and want to make sure that everything's set up before I go out of town because I just looked at my phone and it says it's a negative no it says it's three degrees outside with a wind chill or feels like negative 16 and I'm sure it feels much much warmer than that but let's go outside and see what it feels like this will probably make a lot of you guys that live in Arizona and Florida very jealous because of how great the cold weather feels against your skin. Hmm? <laughs> All right, let's go check this out. Oh, I'm, I'm feeling better. I still see things running and it looks good. But there is my winter wonderland, basically frozen. And so this is what my pond looks like at three degrees. I should really have something warmer on. I'm going to actually go ahead and walk on this because at three degrees, this should be pretty, pretty solid. I see some strange, oh yeah, no, it's, it's slippery though. So check it out. This waterfall, which is a thin, thin sheet of water, stopped, completely stopped. So it froze up, but look at how the water is running underneath all of this. If you check out this, you can see that water running underneath. Can't even hear it because the ice is so thick, but that's what happens. The ice actually creates almost this igloo effect, insulating the water running on the inside of all of that stuff. You come over here, there's actually still a small little hole right there where we can see that water running. And then you can obviously see the bubbles and stuff of water coming over there. I can see the water coming out of the biofalls up in that area, so we're good. So what happens in the winter is we start losing water in our pond to create these beautiful ice castle formations behind me. The key is to run this thing all winter long, you have, it is really, it is really cold. <laughs> Um, the key is you have to make sure you have enough water in your pond, or in my case, in my reservoir. And I know I have enough water in my reservoir. I have a 6,000 gallon rainwater harvesting system tied to my pond. Oh my God, is it cold? Yeah, I'm sure you Arizona guys. Oh, and the wind hits. <laughs> I'm sure you Arizona, Florida, California guys are not jealous. I might be able to do without the ice castle formations with and trade it for some warm weather. <laughs> anyways, anyways, so what happens is you have enough water in your tank, your reservoir, in your pond, on the surface area of your pond to fulfill the amount of water you're going to lose to ice castle formations in your pond. So we come down to my pit area here. Another way I can tell I always have enough water in my reservoir is because of this urn right here as long as I see this guy running all winter I know I'm good and the reason I know I'm good is because I set the pump for this guy higher in my vault meaning the pump doesn't sit at the very bottom of my vault it sits up about a foot and a half higher as long as this guy's running all winter I know I still have a foot and a half of water down below it so my pumps that feed my pond will be okay and so here's that negative edge waterfall that falls into my reservoir and it is a solid dome of ice. The worst thing I could do would be to come out here and actually bust this ice up. Because if I busted this 
ice up. What would actually happen is the cold air would actually come back in contact with the water, creating more ice, which then depletes from my water tank, water reservoir down below. And I don't want to drag a hose out here in the middle of the winter. The other thing that could happen is if I came in here and busted this up, water could actually start pouring over the top of the ice going on top of this big giant bed of ice here, not getting down into my reservoir, which would deplete from my water reservoir down below. So that's what we need to look for when running the water feature all winter long. The other thing I wanna pay attention to is how big of a hole do I have open in my pond, allowing oxygen to get in and gases and stuff to escape. And I've got plenty. So it is cold outside. Like I said, three degrees with a negative 16 wind chill. I don't feel comfortable walking on this, but I will. Still good, still good. I'm not gonna go much further. I was gonna actually say I should do a cold plunge, but I only know one guy that enjoys the cold plunge and that's Greg Whitstock. So we'll see if we can invite him out here to jump in the pond. We might even be able to get him to swim from one hole to another to another and go underneath the ice. But I have a giant hole in my pond at three degrees. It's all formed by this aerator I have here. So I have a Pro Air 60 that splits off to two lines, creating a big open area here and another one over there. My wetland filter is there and you can see that's all frozen up with water coming underneath that ice just like my waterfall. The other area I have open is this area over here. I have a 5,000 gallon per hour pump that feeds jets that push water from here and as long as that water is constantly circulating I keep a pretty big hole open even in these sub-zero temperatures. So that is my pond in winter. I'm feeling good about my trip to Arizona knowing my my fish and everything are gonna be okay and I'm really looking forward to getting to some of that warm weather because uh, this sucks. Hey really quick Let's go check out the front feature, see how it's doing, and then I'd love to show you what that thing looks like at night. So there it is, running two. So this doesn't have nearly as large of a reservoir underneath. I think it only has, I have to go back and look, but I think I only put six, maybe five large aqua blocks underneath this, which would be about 150 gallons. But I'm not pushing a lot of water, like hardly any water really comes out of that. You can see how some of that water has actually gotten out over the top of the ice, creating a much bigger ice sickle <laughs> if you will but man does it look cool the other thing I know is I'm probably getting down towards the bottom of my reservoir because the ice is discolored usually when the ice gets discolored it's because I'm pulling sediments from the bottom of my tank and, and then staining the ice the other thing I see here is that this is still running pretty good but I don't see air bubbles so I'm confident that I still have enough water in there to let this thing go same thing worst thing I could do would be to bust up all of this ice here bust up the ice on here because it would deplete or it would allow that cold air to come back in contact with the water creating more ice which would surely drain my 150 gallon tank all right guys i can't wait to show you what this thing looks like at night so look at how awesome this is at night from here it doesn't look like much especially because of the camera angle but as we get closer look at how cool the ice formation is so there's the guy Look at that, I mean it's so awesome. And I don't know if you can hear it, but that water is definitely running underneath all of that ice still. Here's that bowl. Look at how awesome it is. This is the only part about it being negative 16 or whatever they said it is. That's cool. Again, this only happens because of that giant reservoir down there. So whether it's daytime or nighttime, just <laughs> look at how cool it looks. And look at my dryers on. So look at all the fog coming up over there. Huh? Winter Wonderland. Yes, and we still have our Santa out. So that's <laughs> that's a wrap. Oh, let's do this. Let's do this with the special effects. So that. <laughs> That's a wrap. Hope you enjoyed my winter wonderland and uh, hopefully you guys learned something. Hey, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, tell all your friends and maybe we'll do this when it's slightly warmer outside. Till then, bye.